Welcome to our lecture online. This problem deals with standing waves just like the previous problem, but instead of standing waves on a string, they're standing waves in an air column inside a tube. So let's read the problem and see what it says. A student is performing an experiment using a resonance column and a tuning fork of frequency 244 uh, hertz or 244 vibrations per second. He is told that the air in the tube has been replaced by another gas Assume that the column remains filled with that other gas, and if the minimum height at which resonance occurs is 0.35 meters, plus or minus 0.05 meters, or 0.005 meters, the gas in the tube is, and they give us four possibilities, neon, nitrogen, oxygen, or argon. Notice in each case they give us the molar mass in grams, and then they give us that the square root of 10 divided by that molar mass in grams is a particular fraction. That helps, of course, because we don't get to take a calculator into the test. They give us some other useful information that 167 times RT is equal to 640 square root of joules per mole, and 140 RT is equal to 590 times the square root of joule over mole. Now, the numbers 167 and 140 should ring a bell because we know that the velocity of a gas, or, or of sound in a gas, is equal to gamma times r times t divided by the molar mass, where gamma is defined as c sub p over c sub v, which for monatomic gas is going to be 5 thirds over, um, uh, let's see, no, no, that's 5 halves, over 3 halves, which is equal to 1.67. So this times 100 gives us this. And gamma is equal to Cp over Cv for a diatomic gas, which, which is 7 over 2 divided by 5 over 2, which is equal to 1.40 times 100 gives us 140. And then notice that if you take 140 times 10, you get 1400, and 1400 divided by the molar mass in grams, because normally we put the molar mass in kilograms, so they kind of compensate by multiplying the numerator times a thousand. So in the denominator, right here, we can put the molar mass in grams instead of the molar mass in kilograms. All right. The second thing we should realize is that the velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Now in this case, the frequency is given to us as 244 per second, but what about the wavelength? Well, they tell us that the minimum height for resonance frequency is 0.35 meters. And the minimum height in an air column like this would be obtained when it looks like this, which means that the height here, which is 0.35 meters, is equal to one quarter of a wavelength. That's the minimum height. Then, of course, the next, the next resonance would be another a half a wavelength further down. I guess you can't see that far with the camera, but it's down here. So anyway, that means that lambda equals 1.4 meters, which means when we plug that in here, we get 1.4 meters. And notice that gives us 244 times 1.4 meters per second as the velocity. And we also have this equation for the velocity. So we can say that the velocity using this equation equals the velocity using that equation. Or here we can say that the square root the square root of, of gamma times r times t multiplied times the square root of 10 divided by the molar mass in grams is equal to 244 times 1.4. Now, what we have is we have four different gases. Neon is a monatomic gas. Nitrogen is a diatomic gas, oxygen is a diatomic gas, argon is a monatomic gas. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of those gases to see if the left side equals the right side and see which of these will match the correct ratio. All right, so first with neon, we're going to try neon A. It's a monatomic gas, so monatomic gas, we're going to take this, the square root, of 167 RT, which is 640. We'll just, let's go ahead and go, that's 640. Multiplied times the square root of 10 over 20, which is 7 over 10. And we want to know if that is equal to the right side equation, which is 244, 
multiply times 1.4. Okay, now remember we don't have a calculator. Could we simplify things a little bit? Well, first of all, this could be written as 64. 7 divided by 1.4 gives us 5. That gives us 244. Uh, this can be divided by 4, so this is equal to 61. This can be divided by 4, which gives us 21 times 5. So that gives us, uh, let's see here, that's 105 equals 61. And the answer is no, it does not equal 61. Did I do that right? Let's see here. 640, 10, that's 21. Oh, no, 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 this is, this is not 21. What am I doing? This is... Not correct. 64 divided by 14 is 16. 16 times 5 is 80. Something didn't look right. And 80 is not equal to 61. So again, A is not a possible answer. All right, now we need to do the same with B, with nitrogen. Nitrogen is a diatomic gas. So in this case, we're going to take 590. So we do B now. 590 multiplied times for nitrogen we're going to take the square root of 10 over 20 is 3 over 5 and is that equal to question mark 244 times 1.4 all right can we simplify this a bit uh, let's see here 5 goes into 590 that's 118 so we got 118 times 3 is equal to 244 times 1.4 and both are divisible by 2, they're both, well, let's see, if that's 59 times 3 is equal to 122 times 1.4, and that would be equal to uh, 177 is equal to question mark, because we're trying to figure out that's equal. Now, to save time, we can do that quickly on the side, working that out, or we can 122 times 1.4, it's 170.8. And you can see that no, this is not correct, this is not equal, not close enough anyway, so that means that B is also not an answer. All right, now we do the same for C. So C, again, we're dealing with a diatomic molecule, oxygen, so we take 590, multiply times the 10 divided by the molar mass, the square root of that is 9 over 16, and that is equal to 244, times 1.4. All right, so uh, 16, 590, just to save time, I'm gonna quickly work it out with a calculator. 590, again, you couldn't use a calculator on the test, so you have to work it out real quick, divided by 16. So I get 331.875 on the left side, I get 244 times 1.4 equals, we get 341.6 on the right side. Notice it's not close enough, so they're not equal. That means C is also not an answer. And then finally, we go for D. So we struck out on A, B, and C. D is probably the correct answer. Let's see if we're correct. Again, we're dealing with a monatomic molecule, so we go back to 640. Multiply the times the square root of 10 over 36, which is 17 over 32. And that equals 140, uh, not 244. So 244 times 1.4, question mark. Again, we're checking that out. But notice here that 32 goes to the 640 evenly. So we got 20 times 17. Is that equal to question mark 244 times 1.4? These are both divisible by 4, so we get 5 times 35 is equal to, uh, that would be 61 times 1.4. These are both, oh, wait a minute, 5 times, why am I saying 35? This should be 17. 17, okay. Uh, 5 times 17, that would be 85, is equal to 61 multiplied times 1.4. And again, that's question mark. We're not sure if it is. We're checking that out. Again, you work this out quickly, or we go 61 times 1.4, which is 85.4 and 85. Notice they're really close together, plus they gave us a plus and minus of 0 0.005, so we're allowed a small amount of error. This is definitely the closest we got in all four answers, so I believe that this would then be the correct answer. So in this case, D 
is the gas. It's argon gas in that gas tube, and that's the only one that gives you a close enough comparison between the velocity calculated like this and the velocity calculated like this. When you set them side by side, you want to make sure you get the same value for both when you plug in the corresponding numbers. And that is how it's done. And yes, I did use a calculator, otherwise you'd have to work this out by hand, and again, you'd be hard-pressed to get it done in three minutes.